Hi, this is a session around developing a sporting legacy through a higher education institution. My name is Mark Jeffries and I'm the Director of Sport and Physical Activity at Birmingham City University. Um, the aim of this session was to give a short presentation of 10 to 15 minutes and then leave time for some questions and suggestions around how we can make the most of the, the legacy that will follow the Commonwealth Games in 2022. So, first of all, a little bit about the university. Uh, Birmingham City University is the second largest university in Birmingham. It has approximately 24,000 students and those students come from 80 countries. So the, the population of the university, especially in, in terms of both staff and students, is very diverse and that makes the university very much what it is but approximately 70% of our students come from the area. They live within an hour of, of the university itself. Uh, and, and most of those therefore commute to the university rather than stay on, on campus. The university prides itself very much on being a practice-based university. Um, so the, the students that attend Birmingham City University can very much rely on um, getting involved with industry and uh, utilising the strong partnerships that the, the university has built with industry across all areas of the university. Uh, and as has been announced in the, in the press over the last year or so, um, BCU has signed an agreement with Birmingham City Council to move their sports department over to the Alexander Stadium site after the Commonwealth Games. And part of the the presentation is about how we make the most of that move and how we can de help develop the legacy that will follow the, the Commonwealth Games in, in 2022. So how we're going to do that? Well, first of all, we want to develop a skilled and relevant student workforce. How do we make them skilled? How do we make them relevant? Well, the most important thing that we need to do in terms of that is by linking with industry. Um, we need to have a range of partners who work in the, the sport, the physical activity, the health areas, um, who can help us ensure that, that the courses that we deliver are both relevant and needed within the area. And therefore, we can help develop the skills and identify the skills that are needed um, within that workforce. So it's really important that the partnerships that we develop and continue to develop within the area are, are relevant for our students because it is these partners that are going to probably be the employers of the students in, in years to come. It's planned that the, the student numbers studying sports courses will increase from around 500 to 1,000. This will be achieved by offering a greater range of, of courses that are relevant to the the university, but also relevant, as I mentioned before, to the industry. Uh, and the increase in student numbers, again, is likely to follow the percentage of the students that come from the local area. One of the, one of the key courses that we are looking to develop is one that is going to be based around sport and community development, um, because it is important that the students who, who study at Alexander Stadium actually don't just study there but they they a they make an impact on the area but are actually part of the community it's really important for the students that they become part of the community and and as such they benefit themselves from the opportunities that are developed but they also have the opportunity to put back into the area that many of them come from so the courses that will be developed will probably utilize a blended learning approach, uh, which means that hopefully the students will spend as much time with our partners as they will at the university themselves. And then the, the curriculum will be very practice focused. So it is foreseen that, that students, especially on the sport and community development course, will spend two or three days a week with the partners, um, actually working for the partners and, and helping them to deliver the element that they deliver. 
and then they'll spend a certain amount of time at the university where they will gain the, the uh, underpin, underpinning theory um, based around their particular course. Um, we've been working since the, the sports departments have been set up over the last three years. Um, we've been working on building a range of community-based sports clubs and organization partnerships. Um, and we want to further develop this in the, in the lead up to A, the Commonwealth Games and B, our move over to the Alexander Stadium. So how will we help develop a sporting legacy through the, the institution itself? Over the last three years, we've been developing what we call our a PACE model, uh, which is promote, activate, compete and excel. Um, and we've been working with this within the university, but we feel that it's a model that can be taken into the community. So the promotion of what is actually going on is, is really important and how people get to understand and know what is going on and available to them in terms of both sport and physical activity is really, really important because we could do the, the other three elements to the, to the model, but if you don't promote the model, then people might not know about it and therefore be unable to engage. The activate is the element of the, the model that is around getting people active and just getting people involved in any type of sport or physical activity. This is mainly done at a recreational level, um, a level where it's fun, a level where it's, it's enjoyable, and it's a level where there are definite benefits to both physical and mental health. Um, it, is, it is a level where there are social benefits as well. So people get to, to get together and whether it's going on a, on a healthy walk or get involved in a yoga class or a Pilates class or whatever it may be, it's the, it's the level that people can just turn up and have a go and engage. And we think that this is a, a really important level on, on part of, the, um, part of the, the, the model as a whole, because this is where we will hopefully um, attract and engage with, with most people. For people who actually then like the sport, they may want to compete. Uh, and so, by utilizing the range of, of clubs that exist in the area, we can help in enabling the channels that, that exist for people to compete in sport. Um, and again, that brings physical health benefits, it brings mental health benefits, and again, it also brings social benefits. So there are a range of reasons that people might want to, to compete in, in the sport that they want. Uh, and whether that competition is at a more recreational level or a more serious level will depend on, on, on the needs of, of the club and also the, the, the wants of the individual. And finally, um, we are hoping that, that people in the area will get the chance to excel. We know that there are examples from um, facilities like the GMAC where people have, have entered um, the GMAC very much on a recreational level as a, as a young um, young child uh, and stayed within the, 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 the talent development system there and have actually ended up excelling in their sport. And we want to be able to develop these channels that allow opportunities for, for people from the area to potentially excel in their sport. And so the university will be involved in all elements of this. Um, the, the promote and activate will be very much uh, aimed around the, the sport and community development based courses and the compete and excel will very much be supported by many of the science courses like sport and exercise science, sport and exercise nutrition and, and sports therapy. But the package as a whole will hopefully help in developing the community opportunities as a whole and build on many of the opportunities that will exist that come out of the Commonwealth Games. 
So there is a facility focus for, for the community development. We know that there will be an additional running track at the Alexander Stadium. We know that there will be additional 3G opportunities. And, and we know that there are plans for a phase two of the uh, facility development at, at Alexander Stadium. And what is really important is that we assist the community in utilizing facilities in the best way possible so that the facilities that are based at Alexander Stadium are, are both university, but also, and probably more importantly, community facilities as well. And we as a university can then engage with the, the community in order to, to make best use of, of the facility. So it's really important that we identify the opportunities that will develop through the interest in the Commonwealth Games in 2022 and how we then go about capitalising on those opportunities and really working very closely with all community organisations who have an interest in this area to make the most out of the, the opportunities that will develop. I see the, the question there from, from Family Fit. Is this available just for sports club or any types of fitness activity? It's definitely for any type of fitness activity. We're really keen to develop um, physical activity opportunities as well as, as sporting opportunities. So it's really important that we identify any opportunities that exist and, and work with the community to be able to promote and, and get people involved in these. So whether it, it's from developing walking opportunities, as I mentioned earlier, to, to, to yoga, to Pilates, what, whatever it may be, any type of fitness activity is, is going to be really important as the portfolio of the opportunities that, that are developed. Are there any further questions that, that anybody has? Um, I, I think the attendance is relatively small. So if, if anybody would like to uh, unmute and have a chat, I'd be more than happy to, to have a chat. Can I ask if, if the, um, the, the presentation made, made sense and, and uh, do you agree that there are opportunities for the university to work with uh, the local community um, to, to help develop the, the legacy? Because um, it's really in case that, that, that we have those opportunities. That's fantastic, thank you. I'd just like to add that, I mean, given that I'm involved now in a lot of um, sports and fiscal activity related stuff because of um, this is my city and you can it's it's very important to try to balance out like you talked about given the basis for theory and you know the actual justification before moving on into practice yeah it, it's very necessary to try to balance both of those things out and basically see that there is like um a justified reason for engaging in these sports and activities in this these groups of fiscal activities and how especially is necessary for mental health in my case like in my field of um research so i think i mean it's really important that um he has a big role to play in um what do you call it in building this legacy especially towards the commonwealth games and given that birmingham is such a diverse place and there are just so many people from different places and just giving everybody a bit of recognition at some point in time or another yeah uh, absolutely and, and and i think that that is so important in terms of engaging with with all you know areas of the community to to identify what opportunities we need to develop um to to help um engage people and 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 to help 
make an offer that is going to be attractive um, because with, without that engagement we might develop an offer that, that totally misses the mark um, and so it's really important that we have that engagement in the in the lead up to the Commonwealth Games so that we can develop an offer on on the site and in the community that really can have an impact um, because it's really important that um, that I think this is a this is a, a a once in a lifetime opportunity um and and if we miss it and, and get it wrong then uh we, you know we may regret it for a for a long time yes um the, the question from family fit around culturally sensitive uh areas yes absolutely I, I think it's it's really important that that we develop appropriate activities um that are going to be the, the activities that that people want um, and and I, th I think that if we are going to to be successful in developing this legacy, we really need to to take um, th those those things on board. And and I I agree. I, I think that there is limited space at the moment. Um, but I, I think we can be quite creative in in how we do that. So I, I think, for example. Um, we, we can use, start to use the, the, the park more um, and, and not just the, the indoor facilities. I, I think there are opportunities to develop women only walking groups, women only running groups, et, et, et cetera. So I think there, there can be a, a range of opportunities and, and we, we have to think, I think a little bit innovatively about how we do that. And feel free for another question. Um, I'd just like to ask, so um, how, so there are different charities already that um, are basically working in the communities and trying to advance sports and fiscal activity. Um, how does HA plan to support these groups, especially because, um, so I'm going back to a study I did recently, and one of the major themes that came out was that they didn't feel like HA was being as supportive as they should, because if they had better um, backing research related backing or backing from academics it'll be um they'll have more justified reason to receive grants and funding and things like that and i've just been wondering how can he um take part with what do you call it helping these community organizations these charities especially during covid where a lot of them are going under to like get back on their feet support them with you know research evidence and evidence-based practice and things like that that can um be a capacity building tool and enhance their work yeah well i i think the the help can be multi-dimensional um hopefully to, to to also answer the question that, that that's being asked on the on the chat we are really keen that our students engage with with the community we want them to spend virtually as much time in the community as as they do within the university itself um we we want them really engaging with with um with with sports clubs local charity organizations local physical activity organizations to to really embed themselves into the community um and, and help to develop the the offer that is available but then another aspect that leads on from that as, as you mentioned angela is the the monitoring and evaluation of of any of these activities so that we can actually develop a, a, a research base that that actually demonstrates that there a is a is, is a need for it b that we're, we're meeting the need and c there are positive benefits from that so I, I think the the opportunities that exist for the university itself are, are multi-dimensional, um, but it, it's only through the engagement of both staff and students with with the community that we'll be able to really maximise the opportunities that that exist. And and so we need to start that now. Um, and and obviously I'm I'm in a very fortunate position that that I recently joined the. The, the board of UCAN um, and th they obviously do a tremendous amount of work already um, but I think as, as we as we work, work towards 
the, the date of the Commonwealth Games and, and see what um, facilities are going to develop on site, then there, there's even more that we can do to, to start to develop these opportunities. Um, that, that will hopefully be really long lasting and, and hopefully be really impactful as well. Thank you very, very much, Mark. Um, one other thing, given that I'm coming from a Commonwealth country, okay, um, if it wasn't for a PhD, I would not have landed here anyway. Yeah. But um, given that this is about the Commonwealth Games and this is about Hechi as well, um, I believe that different um, people from different Commonwealth countries that are outside of the UK, but will look to benefit from some of the things that BCU can, you know, um, put out there, can provide as an institution, as a part of the Commonwealth Games, as a partner. Um, where do you see this going, given that, again, Brexit has happened and the UK is going to have to involve the Commonwealth more in a lot of their um, engagements? How do you see things going forward from here on? Well, I think that's a, that's a great opportunity for, for us as a university, but it, it's hopefully also a, an opportunity from, for people from the Commonwealth. Um, I, I think that the, the, the Games is, is a real opportunity for the, the Commonwealth countries to, to come together and, and identify where and how we can work together to develop the, the, the opportunities that are, are really going to make a difference to the, the community. Um, and, and therefore, the the um, the Brexit um, sort of emphasis will now ensure that we we have to um, work with the um, with the Commonwealth community, which is so strong in Birmingham, and and I think that there are, are real opportunities here for for us to develop opportunities through um, you know, festivals such as this one, which is, is really fantastic at, at, at bringing the, the Commonwealth community together, but also really celebrating all the different areas from, from the Commonwealth. And, and it's, it's understanding what their desires and their needs are. And, and then it's how we help to develop uh, a, a sport and physical activity offer um, that is going to meet their needs and, and as we mentioned earlier can help towards the, 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 the social development, the, the, their physical health and, and their mental health. So I think there are, there are great opportunities. Thank you very, very much, Mark. That's, that's, that's very, yeah. And, and going back to the uh, the, the question on, on, on the chat, um, yes, ab absolutely, that there are a range of things that, that we will hopefully be able to do that, that are not necessarily um, sports related. Um, obviously, it's the, it's the sports department that will be moving over to Alexandra Stadium. But at the same time, the, the offer across the university is, re is really, really diverse. And so there are opportunities to work with um, our, our, our staff and students in, in areas of, of, of mental health, art, design, media, um, business, law, social sciences, uh, across the university to develop a, a, a real, um, offer to the community that, that I don't think we've had the opportunity to do before. But I, I think that this, this, this move to the, the stadium and the development of, of the Commonwealth Games provides an opportunity for us to really start to, to come together and work together to, to support the community in a whole host of different ways. Thank you very much, Mark. So, uh, this, this, is, this is an amazing discussion and I'm really, yeah, I'm really enlightened and learning a lot of things. Um, there's one more question. Yeah. yeah. So um, in, in terms of, of the timeline, the university has obviously ma made the announcement that we will be moving over to um, 
the Alexander Stadium. Uh, the, the timeline will, will very much depend on the time that is taken for the, um, the sort of close down of the event and when we can then start to, to move in. I, th I think for some of the courses, it will be towards September 2023 because there's quite a lot of facilities to be brought over to the, to the stadium. But we are hoping that, that certainly the, the, the sports development and community development courses um, really get over there as soon as we can af after the games. So we, we would hope to be in there as, as soon as possible um, after um, any refits have to be done, et cetera, following the, the, the close down of the games. And will, will we as a university develop an active community and sports development department that, yes, absolutely. So, so my remit within the university is, is to work beyond the curriculum. Um, so I work in trying to get um, staff and students to be more physically active uh, and to help with their, their mental health, etc. But the one of the main aims of our move over to the to the uh, Alexander Stadium is that we actually spread that work out, and by working with the community and increasing the number of students that we have is to, to engage those students into the local community so, so that we are part of the development of that, that active community. Um, so it, it's really um, important that, that we are able to um, work with, with UCAN, work with other um, organizations to make sure that we, as a, as a sports development department uh, within the university, actually make the most of um, the, the infrastructure that already exists and, and make sure that the, the opportunities um, benefit from the, the influx in, in students into the area and hopefully they will become part of the, the workforce that offers um, sport and physical activity um, to, to Birmingham residents. Thank you, Mark. Oops. Um, are there any more questions and um, suggestions? I'm going to unmute everybody now. So if you'd like to ask a question, please go for it. Thank you. Hi, Mark. Hi, Panikos. How are you? Uh, great, great. Not, not sure if you knew that I was on the call. Um, I, I just noticed now. Yeah, so thank you very much. Uh, listen to every word and hanging on to them words because uh, really looking forward to the developments of BCU um, oh, yeah. in terms of the stuff that we can potentially do together for residents as well and community uh, and the job opportunities that, that may arise from that as well. So yeah, looking forward yeah. to what the future holds with BCU. Brilliant. Thanks, Panikos. And, 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 and likewise, really looking forward to it. That's it for me. Brilliant, thank you. Thank you, Panikos. Are there any more questions or suggestions? Or would you like to add any closing remarks, Mark? Um, well, it, th thanks for those people who have attended. And, and it, it, it's really nice to, to share our, our vision with um, some people and, and, and Hopefully, this is, is just the, the start of the, of the communication that we have with a whole host of different, different people and, and different bodies. Uh, and, and if anybody has got any questions following today, um, please send them through. Uh, my, my email address is mark.jeffries at bcu.ac.uk. Um, but I'm also at, on Twitter at, at jeffriesmj. Um, or I'm, I'm sure if, if they sent a message through the, the this is my city, um, oh, thank you. Um, if, if anybody sends a, a, a message to this is my city, I'm sure it'll get to me.
Thank you very, very much, um, Mark. Um, this has been a great session and I'm personally really looking forward to working with you. I'm already in BCU, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Working exactly. With, with you, Khan, with BCU and with all the amazing community members um, towards the Commonwealth Games and the legacy that we're trying to leave even after the Commonwealth Games. So thank you once again. No, thank you, Angela, and uh, much appreciated. And thank you for, for chairing the session. So thank you to everyone that joined us for this session. We will um, end it now if there are no further questions or suggestions. So enjoy the rest of your Sunday afternoon. And yeah, bye. Thank you very much. Bye.